So hi everyone, uh, I'm Xinxin. Uh, welcome, welcome to our presentation today. Uh, Joey and I will introduce the taxonomy related projects for Aztec. Um, so let me give a quick introduction to Aztec. Uh, it is a resource discovery index, or put more simply, a search engine for biomedical and bioinformatics tools. It allows users to search for a diverse array of tools. And Aztec currently contains tools from web services, standalone software database, uh, database or knowledge base, publications, and libraries composed of uh, many interrelated functions. So this diagram gives a quick overview of Aztec's uh, structure. Uh, the web application of Aztec provides an interface to search for the tools, and user can interact with Aztec through a web application or directly through an API. And the uh, initial resources are retrieved from four primary sources, NIH DB2K and other NIH supported programs, uh, scientific literature mining, author submission, or federated Go resources. Um, all of these resources are stored in our databases and indexed to support an integrated and powerful search service. Uh, well, in this part, I will mainly talk about our information retrieval system. Uh, it is called Aztec IR, a semantic rich information retrieval system for bioinformatics tools. Uh, it is built for support the keyword search and the domain classification task for the broader project Aztec. So why do we want to do this? Uh, basically, we will do the keyword search on the description of tools. Uh, however, the documents can be very short. Uh, up to now, more than 40% of the description in our repository are shorter than 10 words. So it is quite likely that the uh, uh, keywords entered by a user are not inside the document. Uh, thus, the retrieval performance will decrease. So one potential way to solve this problem is automatic document and query expansion. Uh, however, we cannot find uh, any open access resources that perfectly meet our need. And uh, our current search system, uh, Solar, does not perform well. So we think it's necessary to build our own information retrieval system. Uh, this, uh, this is the overview of our system. So basically it has three components, uh, Pythagoras Builder, doc 2 vac Converter, and Document Retriever. Uh, in the first component, we will build a thesaurus, which includes all the necessary knowledge of our specific domain and uh, supports the following two parts. Uh, in the second part, we will convert raw text in the high dimensional vectors. And uh, in the last part, we apply the similar principle to query and evaluate the similarity between query and the documents. So I will introduce more detail in the following. So uh, let's talk about the data. Uh, in our system, we utilize two corpus. Uh, for the first one, uh, we will use it to build the thesaurus. So we expect it could be large enough to cover all the knowledge of the bioinformatics field, especially the reasonable phrases and the semantic relation between terms. So we extract the abstracts from bioinformatics, BMC bioinformatics, uh, bio, um, nature biotechnology plus computational biology um, because uh, uh, they are the journals that publish more tools than other journals. And uh, also we combine them with the description of tools in Aztec. So totally we got more than 30,000 documents. And our corpus two is the description of tools in Aztec, uh, which we will do the research on. So we have four components in our thesaurus. Uh, the first one is phrase list, which includes the meaningful phrases and that represent the concepts in our domain. And for each term, uh, uh, there will, well, well, a term could be a word or a phrase. Uh, we will get a list of these semantic similar terms, synonyms, hypernyms, and hyponyms. Well, we first use the chi-square test, a, a classic statistic-based phrase mining approach to extract the mean for phrases. Well, the chi-square is calculated in the following formula. So it is quite simple. And uh, 
uh, if the frequency of k plus 1 grams larger than 20 uh, and uh, the chi square larger than 3.8, we just consider it uh, as the reasonable phrase. And in this way, we totally got 6,068 phrases with the maximum length as 5. So to anal uh, analyze the semantic relation between the terms, uh, we use word to uh, It is a neural network based uh, <coughs> uh, method for analyzing semantic similarity. So basically, it maps words into high dimensional vector space and calculate their cosine to determine the similarity between words. To train this model, we will firstly recognize the raw sentences in our corpus one. Uh, the words will be mapped to their lemma and uh, the uh, multiple words will be combined together if they are phrased. And uh, then we will use this to nice the sentence uh, as a training data for the word to write. So after the analysis, we find that uh, there is total uh, 26,067 terms in our vocabulary. For each term, the similar terms and the, their associated similar scores are stored into the thesaurus. So for example, for the RNA sequencing, uh, it has a similar terms that uh, are the uh, transcriptal size with 0 0.838837 similar scores, and also the RNA-seq experiment um, transcriptome sequencing. So to pick a really reasonable similar terms, uh, we set a threshold of the similar score. So it is a maximum of 0 0.7 and 0 0.8 times the maximum similar score. To get the synonyms, uh, we use the concepts in Wikidata. For each concept, its aliases are considered as synonyms. Since uh, there are total 24 million concepts in Wikidata, uh, we build a filter on these aliases to get rid of the useless stuff. So if an alias appears in our vocabulary, uh, all the other aliases are added to the set of synonyms. To get the hypername and the hyponyms, we use Meshum. Uh, the medical subject hidings uh, that gives the hierarchy of the biomedical terms. So after we build the thesaurus, we also calculate the inverse document frequency of each term based on corpus one, and uh, we will use it as the global weight of the terms in our domain. So such weight will be used in the query extension part. Well, IDF is a popular way schema to distinguish importance or relevance of terms. Uh, it has many different, different definitions. Uh, here we use the most uh, classic one. So through the Pythagoras Builder, uh, we get a vocabulary of bioinformatics domain. And for each term, we get a set of synonyms uh, a set of semantic similar terms and the global term weight IDF, and also we start store the whole hierarchy of uh, hypernames and uh, hyponyms. So, in information retrieval system, a uh, space vector model is a popular and su uh, successful model that uh, represents documents with vectors. Uh, with this model, the uh, relevance between query and documents are defined as the cosine between two vectors. Uh, we also use this model in our system. Uh, in the following part, we want to expand the, the description with uh, relevant terms and uh, convert them into vectors. To do this, we will first evaluate the weight of each term in the description and then expand the description based on the thesaurus and assign weight to the additional terms. We use the text rank to evaluate the importance of each term for a given document. Uh, it is a graph-based uh, keyword extraction method published in 2004. Uh, basically, it first builds a complete graph uh, where each no uh, term is a node of the graph. And the weight of each age depends on the distance between pairs of words that occur together within a certain window. 
in the Google PageRank algorithm, then it's used to assign a rank to each words. So in this way, the keywords can that better represent the content of the document will get a higher weight uh, regardless its frequency. So we modify the text rank by taking rel relative position of terms in the document into account. Uh, we first use the Stanford parser to extract the graph of, de of dependency from the sentences and we collapse the nodes that present uh, a single terms into one node. So for example, for the sentence, the uh, gene ontology defines concepts that used to describe gene functions. Uh, so we first view the dependency graph and uh, collapse the gene ontology and gene functions, which in fact are phrases. And then we will use the undirected version of this graph and calculate the minimum distance between pairs of nodes. Uh, this distance will be, will be used jointly uh, with pre previous distance that get by text rank to decide the, the age weight. So in the previous part, we get the sequence of key terms associated with their weight. And now we want to expand the, the sequence uh, with the synonym, hypernym, and the semantic similar terms. Well, the score is assigned as a following schema. So for term J, WJ is its weight, and the synonyms will get uh, at least the same score as TK, <coughs> uh, as TJ. Sorry. Uh, similarly, we can get the weight for uh, hypernames and the semantic similar terms. Uh, one thing I want to emphasize is that we do not expand document with uh, hyponyms. Well, a tool related to genomics, uh, it is, is also related to the computational biology, uh, which is this hypername. But we cannot say that the same tool is related to epigenomics, which is a hyponym of genomics. So we apply the same schema to query. For term TK in the query, its weight WK is the IDF of TK, uh, which we got in the first part. And now we assign the higher weight to hyponym than hypername. So if a user searches for the G uh, genomics, he will be very likely to be interested in the tools about epigenomic, which is this hypername. Well, he will be less interested in more general tools about computational biology, uh, which is hyponym. So after the expansion for the query and each document, we can get an M dimension vector with M equals to 26,067, which is the size of our vocabulary uh, with the their weight of unrelated words and WK of the case related words. So according to our experiment, we found uh, that the scale product performs better than the cosine in evaluating the similarity. So we just use the uh, scale product in our system. So there is some of our results. Uh, we use these twelve queries to evaluate the accuracy. And as you can see from the figure, our system got a superior uh, uh, result compared to solar. Uh, next part, my colleague Joey will introduce the text categories and test. Hello, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the text categorization part uh, in this project. When users search tools on, on Aztec, if they can limit their search in specific domain, results could be much better. So on one hand, the system can filter the results depending on the user's requirements. On the other hand, the system can recognize what domain the user's query should belong to and automatically choose the results to, to show. Therefore, domain classification seems necessary on improving the uh, users experience and also on data management. And in our case, we're going to use the description of the tools to predict the domain prediction. Um, considering of the text categorization, uh, it is a quite common task both in development work 
um, research work, uh, there has been have been many many ways and techniques that could be used to you to solve this problem. Um, so today I I'm going to talk about this talk from a different aspect. Uh, we all know the bad data is what we often meet with in project, and the bad and dirty data refers to information that could be er erroneous, misleading, and without general formatting. Uh, here is an example of the bad data. The data has 6,000 items, and only 2,700 of which is useful. It means the data set is small. Some of the items are added by the user, and there must be some errors inside. Most of the items belong to one or two domains, which means this data set is extremely skewed, and they are all in unstructured text data, and this is without formatting. So this is our data. So how to deal with it? Um, let's have a detailed view of our data first. On the left hand side, there is a very informative um, description of the tool um, with more than hundreds, hundreds of words. Um, but in fact, about more than half of the items in our data set is like the right hand side, the three examples here. We don't know what it talks about. So, and we can have a view of the distribution of the words containing the descriptions. Um, more than half um, of the items has less than 10 words. And the domain distribution analysis, you can see the, you can see the pie. Um, about half of the items is, belongs to genomics and the proteomics, genomics, biomedical, the three, three types almost um, occupied most of the items. And we can have a clear view of, the, uh, of our data set in this graph. Um, about nine domains we found in our data set. And most of them are genomics, proteomics, and biomedical. So firstly, we have had some try on the baseline approaches and models. The first one we use is the TF-IDF with logistic regression. Uh, the TF-IDF is a product of the two statistics, the term frequency and inverse document frequency. And then we use the values from the TF-IDF to build a logistic regression model to predict our results. And the results shows like 83.9 percentage of the accuracy and it seems quite well. And then we replaced the TFID values with scores from the duct to vac converter, which mentioned by Cincy before, uh, with the tactics like the text rank. And this text rank contributes to the similarity scores for words in vectors. And then we also use the logistic regression to build a model for the prediction. And this model got up 84.3% of uh, accuracy a little bit improvement. Then we use the labeled LDA. Labeled LDA is a supervised version of the latent direction allocation. Uh, this is a very classical model used on text It constrains the LDA by defining a one-to-one -one correspondence between LDA's latent topics and the user text. And for this model, we just got about 79.5 of accuracy. So we can see all the models used before don't have a very good results. Uh, so we are thinking about how to deal with our bad data. Uh, we just use uh, descriptions to pre predict how our domains, but what we forgot about the uh, relationship between each tool. You can, maybe we can leverage the relationships for the prediction. So we got uh, our own methods, the semantic similarity recommendation. Uh, this is based on the similarity calculation uh, from the back to back from the text rank. Um, and we firstly got our original SSR. Uh, we leveraged the accurate feature space for representing the short text 
performance and also for similarity calculation. And for each tool, we can we can got um, five most similar tools um, and use the majority of the domain set of prediction. Uh, this is kind of voting. Uh, for example, the tool ID with 5012 has similar tool proteomics, proteomics, genomics, genomics, and proteomics. So it's very prob probable we recommend proteomics as a prediction. But in fact, we don't know exactly what weights we should put on each position in our five similar tool. So we have a custom customized logistic regression to predict the weights uh, we put on each each tool. And to further improve the prediction accuracy, we um, we use parameters beta one to beta five uh, to assign the weight for the voting relevance for each of the five most similar tools. Then we build a logistic regression uh, to compute the five parameters, which minimize the overall prediction error. For example, um, this uh, this example is shown uh, at the beginning of my presentation, um, and we don't know what the peptide shaker means. And this tool just has less than ten words. Um, and then we got five similar tools for this tool. And we can see that the third one, the 4772, uh, has a domain with predomics. So we can use this information to recommend uh, the domain for our new data, the 49880. So this is a very fast way and, and accurate way to predict the domain. At last, this is the result uh, we got. And we can see that the SSR and the SSR with logistic regression got a very good result, um, about 87.5. 87 so this is all for our presentation.